Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Tina, and you're tuned into Radio Karam. On today's show, I have a special guest coming to you live from the studio. I'm super excited to be speaking with Australian musician Mark Evans, who is the current bass guitarist for the rock band Rose Tattoo, and he was also a member of one of the top grossing and greatest bands of all time, Australian hard rock band ACDC. Welcome to the studio, Mark. Thank you, Tina. I, I, I'm a special guest, am I? I you I, are. I, oh, that, I, I'm, usually, I'm usually called a special pest. <laughs> No, no, not at no, all. No, it's, it's, good to, it's good to be here back in my one of my own hometowns back in Carrum. It's fantastic. I know, I know. I'm thrilled to have you here. So you're good today? Absolutely. And um, Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> and you're back in Melbourne. You're in the middle of a tour so far with Rose Tattoo? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of. Well, we, we call it a tour. It's, it's a good way to work here in Australia because what we do, we basically um, – do yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Saturday and Friday, or mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, fly in and fly in, then fly back home. And, and uh, so it's sort of like being on tour without – it's not like being on the road for like six or seven weeks in a row. Okay. So it's good. So you can have, actually have a home life because uh, I, I didn't have a home life for many, many years. Mm. Uh, being on a, the road all the yeah, time. Yeah, well, well, during COVID – well, Rose Tattoo, we made it halfway through a European tour and then it got closed down. So when when I came back, I had to go into quarantine for 14 days. This is the very start of, of, of COVID started. Gosh. But, but then I was I was in Sydney then for 14 months and it's the longest time I've been in one town since I was 18 years old. Wow. And, and I'm I'm now almost 68. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I loved it. I, I thought COVID was fantastic. I'd stay in the one place. It was really good. That's really good. Uh, yeah. COVID was good. There oh, were some oh, good yeah, yeah. aspects of COVID. Yeah, well, COVID. It, mostly it, you know, wasn't all that flash, but let's get on an up note now. <laughs> so um, it's the Southern Stars Tour. How's yep, it all yep. going? Yeah, oh, it's great. You know, I, I, I've been on record for a long, long while that, um, you know, Rose Tattoo has is, is been my favourite band for many, many mm-hmm. years because so I've got to know Angry um, very early on in the ACDC period because yes. – um, bon Scott sort of discovered Rose Tattoo. He went to see them uh, at a gig at a club in Sydney called Checkers. Uh-huh. Loved them and said, you got to come and see this band. So I went with him uh, actually on New Year's Eve uh, when the Tats were playing there yeah, very early on, on, on their uh, career. So they've and been together for nearly 50 years now. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 50 years in 2026. Oh. So that, so, uh, but what it was a weird thing about it, it was – New Year's Eve, nineteen seventy six, seventy seven, right? Uh-huh. So that's why they just sneak into that two thousand and twenty six thing. Uh, and three years before, at this very same club, ACDC did their first gig ever. Did they? So only three years apart. Wow! So ever since then, um, ACDC and Rose Tattoo have, have um, sort of been so, pretty Connected. much in in in, in a twine, you know. Uh-huh. But wasn't the first four albums, weren't they produced by Harry Vander and George Young? They were. Yeah. Look about you, Little Miss Research. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're touring um, the current album called Outlaws? Oh, no, that, 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 was, that was last year. But see, what what's happening? Yeah, knew, because yeah. I thought, oh, uh, yeah, we were doing current. That. Yeah, yeah, current. Yeah, current. Yeah, yeah okay, very good. Um, yeah, but, but, but Angry's naming each tour we're doing now after a particular album. And, and we're sort of showcasing, you know, four or five songs from that album, which is this one is Southern Stars. Uh-huh. Yes, um, correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, we, we pick out, you know, three or four songs off, 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 the, off those albums that we don't normally play a lot of. Mm-hmm. So it's a great thing. So it's, it's a fan thing, um, you know, because uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of Rose Tattoo songs that don't make the cut – Set lists, you know, there's mm-hmm. so probably three or four that, that must do, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it, it's, it's good to um, be able to showcase songs that, that don't normally get played a lot mm. live. Mm. So, you've yeah. been with Rose Tattoo for nearly seven seven years now, yeah, seven it? years, but you were offered the gig years ago, years well, ago, uh, well, but you're in another band, yeah. Well, I, I, I just finished with ACDC and I come back to um, come back to Australia. 
Um, Because initially when I finished with ACDC, I came back just briefly for Mother's Birthday Mm -hmm. and I was going straight back because there was a a couple of things that were likely for me to do over there and I I was sharing a – going to be sharing an apartment with Bon. Mm Mm-hmm. He said, "You've got to come back." You know, okay, oh, fine, we'll come back. But uh, that 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 didn't happen. But mm. um, um, yeah, yeah. Well, there was a, a couple of guys in the band, particularly Mick Cox. He's another was another Carlton supporter. Mm-hmm. Wanted me to get me in the band, and I said, "Oh, well, that, that's great." And then I spoke to the manager at the time. He said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. You know, fantastic. We'll, yeah, we'll have to. You'll have to get some tattoos." And I, you know. Horrified. I, I, I didn't want to I, – I, I saw Phil Rudd and Bon Scott get some tattoos done one time and I was going to get some tattoos that day. I nearly passed out watching them get tattoos. Oh, wow. So I was so chicken shit. So the first thing that came into my head, so I love to be in a band but I can't have tattoos because I'm Jewish, which is not actually true. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> He said, "Why? Well, oh no! Oh, I can't! Oh, that's, 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 uh, it all went away." And then there was, there's other been other times you go, "You can do this to do that," and then different things. But no, uh, it's all come around about seven years ago that it was the right time. Never since then, it's been great. So, have you got a tattoo now? No way! No, no clean oh. skin. Oh <laughs> no, no! I've, I'm 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 a I'm an absolute coward. No, that's because I was with, actually I was with Bon and Phil in, in uh, this. Guy um, in Sydney, he was on the. It was opposite the, uh, the army barracks in Oxford Street, and his big sign on the face. So he's painless Alex Chater. That's always his name, you right? know. So Bomb was getting his tattoo done on his. What would you call that? His abdomen. on his on his re- lower uh, abdomen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So if he undid his jeans, you could actually see this uh-huh. very ornate thing. Um, so he's getting that done, and he was like. Tough and wincing and all that, and there's blood going everywhere. And, and then Phil got one on the inside of his arms, which evidently is quite painful. Mm-hmm. And he's Phil's tough, he's a tough cookie too. He got like that. And then while Bomb was getting them done, he said, Oh, mate, well, why do they am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah. Of course, you can. Yeah, okay, good. I was just checking. Um, <laughs> it, Bond said, Well, it said, Why do you they call you painless Alex Chater, mate? And he said, Because I don't feel a fucking thing, Bond. And that, mm. that, and that was it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that's the reason, I, you know. I, I just don't think I'm a tattoo person. Mm. No. Fair enough, fair enough. So going back to Rose Tattoo, so mm. they've got a strong following in Germany. Yeah, Germany's really strong. There's a massive metal scene there. Yeah, oh, they're huge. And there's, there's some incredible um, metal bands over there, like uh, German bands mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that are – are bigger than any other bands in the world. There's one um, band called um, Ramstein. I uh, know. Uh, yeah, well, they're they're, they're, mm. they're incredible. And another band called uh, Boss Uncles, which uh-huh. means um, bad uncles, like okay. crazy bad taste mm-hmm. uncles, right? And they they, they do like thirty or forty thousand. And, and Ramstein, they're, they're they're like huge. Yeah. Uh, but but they they but they're, they're all the, those bands tend to be. Really, really theatrical. Mm-hmm. Also, there, there, there's this, you know, but yeah, there, there's uh, far as heavy metal and hard rock goes. Yeah, uh, Germany's very, very mm-hmm. strong for, for roast head, A lot mm-hmm. of other bands, France, Spain. Um, yeah, it's good. Mm. Yeah, so we, we normally do one, uh, at least uh, a tour a year. We do big festivals like Wacken, mm-hmm. which is eight, eighty thousand. That's great. That's great. So, when did your love for music start? So, when did it first come into your life? Like, what, uh, what were your parents listening to? Oh, I, good question. Um, I was very, very lucky with music. Is that I can never remember um, my first memories are based around music. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm from a blended family. Uh, my oldest sister and my brother were, were from. Um, my father's first mm-hmm. marriage and my sister that's closest to me is from my mother's first marriage. Um, so I was a blender. I'm, I'm the youngest of the four. But um, my first memories is, 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 you know, being in the lounge room with uh, Laura and John putting records on, listening to um, Bill Haley and Elvis Presley, mm-hmm. you know, Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, Little Richard, Buddy Holly, all those guys, mm-hmm. right? And just loving that music, um, but 
uh, my mum was um, Sinatra through and through. She mm-hmm. used to play some great Capital Year Sinatra, which they, those Fantastic. those records today. The Rat they're Pack, that, uh, yeah. Well, that, those those Capital Years records, they're all they're all recorded live for mm. orchestra, and they are just some of the best recordings you'll come across. And my dad was also into Nat King Cole, mm-hmm. like the Jazz Trio, which was fantastic. And then also things like um, Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. Mm. So, you know, I I've had incredible uh, music was just in there from the start. Then. Judy, my sister nearest to me, was she was the start of the Beatles. Mm. Um, okay. And that, I've got space the Beatles, the Stones, the Who, the Small Faces, the Kinks, all that sort of stuff. And that's what I, how I got originally got into being um, terminally addicted to the blues, mm. the old blues stuff, like Howl and Wolf, Mighty Waters, all that stuff. So that, that that's. That's it in a nutshell. I was, I think, I was exposed to um, some just some real landmark recordings very early on. Which, if you can't get vibed up about music through that stuff, mm. you know, you, it's never going to totally. do it. You know, yeah. yeah. So some, you know, so I, I can listen to those Sinatra things, those Capital Years things now, and just listen to the, the art in the recording of them, and they're just sublime. They're just, you know, they're very ACDC or Rose to do, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that. Oh, yeah, just brilliant recordings. They, they, they just mm-hmm. they massage your ears. They're yes, wonderful. this is true. Um, so you're an author. You wrote your own book. Uh, can I correct you? <laughs> you wrote your memoir. No, oh no, I'm a best selling author. Yes, you are. You hey. are. You wrote. How that happened? Uh, I got no uh, fucking idea. Well, you know, <laughs> you had you had to. You know, talk about your life. Yeah, yeah. So hell yeah. you wrote a book about your whole experience with the band, and yeah, you know, you, my life in and outside of ACD. Yeah, dirty deeds, my life inside and outside mm-hmm. of ACD. It's such a cool read, and it's Thank quite you. honest and raw. And you talk oh, about oh, yeah, it's raw. Yeah, yeah. You talk about you know, you talk about terrible personal tra- tragedy and loss, and then the, the book provides like an interesting, unique look. Into all the personalities yeah. in the band. Yeah, I think the whole the whole thing was very uh, cathartic and, and and somewhat remedial too. Mm. Writing it at the time I did, and it was cheaper than a psychiatrist. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I get it I, all I, out. I, oh yeah, I, I tend to um, I've got, I have a trait when um, asked about things that sometimes can be a bit ticklish or things that still hurt. And I, I, I tend to be a, a bit trite sometimes and, and just make jokes about it. It's, mm. a, it's a defence thing. Mm. But well, there's uh, yeah. lots of laughs in it as well. It's oh, very yeah. comical. Like, Yeah, well, well I, I like a laugh. You know, you, know, you may have picked that up. But, um, you don't hold back. No, why, why should you? You've <laughs> yeah. got to en- enjoy laughing. You've, you've, you know, you've got to you – ta- you've got to t- you sometimes you've got to t- take one in the shorts for the team. What can I say? It, yeah. it, 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 life's, you know – be great if it was a you know a bowl of cherries for everyone, but yeah. and just life being that we we all have to go through exactly it's life uh, tests in general. But yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, life in general. But mm. with things like when you get when you get your ass kicked mm-hmm. um, emotionally and with with with, with loss, um, there's an interesting thing that happens to people uh, whether whether you're the one that, that that's suffering or. or there's other people around you that, that, that are helping you suffer. Is that you see, you know, the true character of people in, in adverse situations. You, you actually see what people are, if, if they really are worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it tends to be a bit of a filtering system, too. Mm. I, so I'm trying to get something good out of something that really shitty kept that happened, but yeah. like, we all have those things. Mm. How long did it take you to write it? Uh, I wrote it over a period of about two years, but that was on and off. Mm-hmm. You know, I sometimes because you can't. It's like writing a song. Like, um, I might. I found that I couldn't put time aside. So I'll listen. I'll. Um, I've got three days off here. I'll write because mm-hmm. if you'll sit down and you go, nothing happens. Nothing comes. Mm-hmm. But I might do a show uh, and come back. And I said, oh, just before I go to bed, I'll put that thought down. I'd mm-hmm. get the computer. So, and then I'd start at, like, say, 1 o'clock in the morning 
and sometimes three o'clock the next afternoon I'd still be going. Mm. You'd right through the night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can't just turn it on and off. Yeah. But when 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 you when it goes, you just got to get it down. So I, I guess if if I had a sat down and gone from you know A to Z and wrote the whole thing in in one you know in one period, I guess it would have taken with all the edits and mm-hmm. tightening up. Uh, it probably it probably take you three or four months. Mm. Okay. It would have taken me three or four months of solid work, you know. Yeah. So given that it's twelve years later. Mm-hmm. What new chapters would would you have added more to the book or Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's um because um, essentially the book ends um with with the death of my eldest daughter, Kristen, mm-hmm. in, in Amsterdam. Uh, in two thousand and six. So that is that's quite considerable time again and, and a lot's happened since then. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there, there there's there's a there's a you know, there's roast tattoo have always been a big part of my life, but it's a bigger part of now because I've been You could I've do another same. edition. Well, there's – I've been approached on quite a few occasions mm-hmm. to do another one. Uh, Why not? And, and there's quite a lot of stuff that I've got already that I've – I've can, I haven't studiously continued writing, mm-hmm. but when something comes up now – because I quite – I Although it sometimes was really tough, I really enjoyed the process of writing. It was great. It, 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 it's, it really clears things up for you. And so I've just continued that on. Mm-hmm. So there's – there's the next one – Now there you go. When I say the next one, that sounds like I've made the decision to write the book. Mm-hmm. I guess I have. Yes. There That's you go. fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. So yes, a lot just of with the, the – have you done a talking version of that? Like a – no, spoken. No, I, 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 audio. You could book. do an audio. Audio Cause, book. Cause, yeah, because that's how I read. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I like this good. But the, the good thing about, about about the book that, um, particularly from people that 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 know me, that are acquaintances and and or friends, um, I wanted to have the book read like I was talking to you. Mm-hmm. It's like have it. Sort of like a conversation, and that's what comes back to me. So it's just like, just like talking to you. So I'm really happy that or that that's worked that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I because I didn't really have the tools to do it. I, cause I believe I've never written a book before, but I had a great guy called Jeb Dap- Apta who's written quite a few books. He's a great writer, mm-hmm. and um, I, I wrote it, the book is. You know, I didn't have. He's not a ghostwriter. I, I wrote the book, but he was like, um, "If you're making a record, you've, you know, it's great to have someone like George Young and Harry Vander help you, and mm-hmm. they make the record better." Yes, yeah. and, and, and they fine tune it. Yeah, well, Jeff Apter did that for me with the book. You know, I had it all, all. Basically, it was all there, but he just went through it and made the book better. Mm. You know, and it was so easy to work with. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a really quite. It was. I enjoyed the um, process. process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's talk ACDC. You joined mm-hmm. the band in 1975. You were yes, 19 uh, years old. I just turned 19 on March the 2nd mm-hmm. and I think it was March 22nd. Um, it was a Saturday afternoon and I just finished playing football. Uh, I, that was the season I was playing at St Kilda City. I'm a football nut. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went to my local pub, which is the Station Hotel in Paran, and I ran into a guy called Steve McGrath, who I used to also play football at another club with. And he said, oh, listen, I, this band, I don't know who he, he'd done some part-time row. He said, looking for a bass player. I said, oh, yeah, great. I, I, I was play, a bass player, but I, I was a guitar player. I'm mm-hmm. known now as a bass player, but I play guitar also. Mm. So he said, "Well, you know, oh yeah, that's good." And I'd heard, I'd heard about the the band, and I, I knew one of them wore a school suit because I, I used to go to a place called the Hard Rock Cafe, and there was posters up on the wall, ACDC are coming, and there was this caricature of a schoolboy. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, well, that's, that's good. But what got my attention? He said, "There's two guys in it. They're uh, younger brothers to George Young." And that's what got my attention because George Young, Easy, Easy, Beats. Be- Easy Beats are just like mm. one of the greatest bands of all time in my book. 
and write a better, you know, pop song than Friday on my mind if you can, you mm-hmm. know. And so well, that, that's good. So he gave me the um, the address, which was number six Lansdowne Road, East St Kilda, which is only in the next suburb from where I was living in Paran. And I went round there. They weren't there, but Angus's girlfriend was there. And the band was playing at the South Side Six, which is now called the Sandbelt Hotel. And I looked at her and I thought, this could be a really good idea because she was just like sensational, <laughs> lovely personal. <laughs> and, and I thought, wow, this is all right. So right she said, it. come on in. <laughs> hey, here we go. So they come back from the gig, uh, well, there was, at least it was Phil, Malcolm and Angus, to see this guy they did know sitting on the on the uh, the couch being very relaxed with, yeah, not nothing funky or anything, but we just, you know, who the fuck are you? You know, yeah, so, exactly. which is exactly what Ang- Angus said. You know, so oh, no, I have got this phone number. You're looking for a bass player because Bond wasn't with them because Bond never used to hang around with the band. Mm-hmm. And at that stage, the band was working as a four piece. There was Angus was playing guitar, Malcolm was playing bass, mm-hmm. Phil on drums, and Bond. So that's how I first saw them. And the following Tuesday at my local hotel, they played at the Station Hotel, mm-hmm. and they went on. Um, I'd gone back the next day because they'd give me the record, learn the, the album, the song. So you would audition for them as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, they said, well, learn, learn the record, mm-hmm. come back. And that went, and they said, well, we'll work in the you know, station hotel Tuesday night. So what they said, well, we'll do two sets. We'll do the first set will be all the rock and roll stuff, mm-hmm. and the second set we'll do the, the complete record so the manager can have a look at you and so on and so So evidently I passed the test. I never, they, they never actually asked me to join. Okay. And he said, oh, listen, here, here you go. We'll, we're working Thursday at the Walsh and Matilda, Friday at um, the Sundowner in, in Geelong. And, and oh, okay, fine. We'll come and pick you up. Didn't uh, they test you on one of the songs because the last oh, person oh, couldn't oh, play yeah, the yeah, song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was called Soul Strip. But that's yeah. when we start off with it because Malcolm said, this is, I said, the last guy we had couldn't get this right. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're here. Okay. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, because Mal- Malcolm could be uh, Malcolm and Angus when you first meet them, they they're very they can be very very direct and very prickly because mm-hmm. they they really I think that just the nature of, of how they've been brought up they they, they, I, they I think they test people quite a bit. Okay. Uh, once, once once you once you you're in inside the tent, you're, you're very inside. But mm-hmm. once you're outside, you you're outside. Don't get extremely. a look in. Yeah, they're very, very they're very. Uh, they're very clan like. Okay. But the weird the weird thing about that night when um I went there, I, I took my, my still my best pal, uh, a guy called Graham Kennedy, not that yeah. one. Yeah. But um, a guy I grew up with, who's a Scots guy, he's from Glasgow. Mm-hmm. So we're sit watching the first set and Graham said, oh, this is this is really good. And he said, you know, he said, well, they want you as bass players. He said, yeah, we have a bass player. I said, well, why are they changing this? Because you know, Malcolm is a knockout bass player, mm-hmm. right? He said, oh, well, you know, that, 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 the guy playing bass is a guitar player. I to play bass. And he's looking at Malcolm and he said, they're the two brothers, aren't they, the guitar players? I said, yeah. He said, that's Malcolm and that's Angus. Yeah. And I said, how do you know? He said, well, Graham's from Glasgow, he said, I used to play football with him in the Cran Hill. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, and it was really quite coincidental. So my best mate used to play football with him in in, in Scotland, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And and then, you know, not long after that, you were on Countdown. Well, that that weekend. Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday night I did my first half gig with them. Thursday night I worked with them and and Friday night. And then it was that Saturday. I'd been in the band five days and then – Doing countdown, it's where Bond was dressed up in the school. That's course right. I've, I've, that was so I funny. That. Oh yeah, because hey, we did the rehearsals and all that, and he sort of disappeared. And we we're the first band on, so they had this this sort of countdown intro. Because they used to think say that the the, um, the show was recorded live. Essentially, it was in the fact. It was all recorded in one. There was no edits. It was all recorded in one go because mm-hmm. you could have it rolling for fifty minutes. Because they there's no commercials mm-hmm. from but, the ABC not, back in those days. Not Sunday. I night. loved Countdown. Sunday night, yeah, and repeated on Saturday. So yeah. that was great. So it was recorded live, and when you you played, and what gave it the live appearance was in the studio. They played the backing track, and all the lead vocals were done live. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it had a bit of a live feel about mm-hmm. it. 
So, you know, the, we're the first band on and the countdown intro's gone and, I'm, and the song starts and, and no one could see, you know, where's Bond? And then he'd come on stage dressed like he was and fill myself, we just, we couldn't help ourselves, we were in bits. He did that a few times on different shows. Mm-hmm. We'd just be looking at Bond and laughing our heads off. <laughs> but he was, he, was, he was a character. Mm. So what was going through your mind? You were like living this life of a bona fide rock star and oh well, yeah yeah well that, well that stage it was interesting because the the, the, the the band it just the band was so sort quick of with you yeah well it, 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 it happened so quick for the band too because when when I joined them it, there was nothing the record was selling I think the record was released the start of the year probably the, probably third week of January so the record had been out when I joined about six weeks it hadn't really made any impression mm-hmm. so. We'd be playing shows like that. That gig I did with the, the Station Hotel, there was about twenty people there. I know. So yeah, uh, smaller crowds, and then it, all of a sudden, it, 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 it all happened from say a few weeks, like April, April, May, June. It just went from having twenty or thirty people at the gig to like full houses turning people away. Mm. So it, it was really, really quick. So what was it like touring the world at such a young age in the, in the 70s? Like it would have been just madness. It was it was different. I, I think back now I would – I. it's a lot easier now to tour than it was then uh-huh. um, because, you know, you're living in London, like you couldn't really keep in contact with people because it, it, was, it sounds – Sounds ridiculous now, but um, international calls were so expensive. Mm. I used to go go to um, Trafalgar Square to you know you'd have to book a, an international call. You couldn't. There's no direct mm. dial, so it, it used to, used to cost um, uh, six pound for three minutes, which is basically say twelve dollars for three minute three minute mm-hmm. phone call, and and you know this is back in the stage where if you get walk walked into a a pub, you'd, you'd, you'd get a, a beer for like 80 cents or something, you know. So it was all very expensive and you couldn't – I had to wait for the newspapers, you know, the Australian newspapers hit the newsstands in, in Trafalgar Square on the following mm-hmm. Thursdays to get the football scores. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you go, well, I, and you go read the football scores. Oh, yeah, and and you, you really just basically kept in touch by letters to everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. So it's a you, different time, but now yeah. you, I can go anywhere. Exactly. And I saw my last time I, I was in Europe, uh, May and June, I had the um, the pleasure of having to wake up at two o'clock and four o'clock and six o'clock in the in the morning so I could watch Carlton get flogged. <laughs> yeah, you know that was that was fantastic. You know, <laughs> oh well, for joy, for joy. But you can do anything now. You can just <laughs> FaceTime people, mm. and yeah. But back then, you, you just really couldn't. It's hard to keep in contact. And that, or, you know, there was a, you know, you used to get homesick, you know. Yeah, yeah. So within a year you relocated to London. Yeah. And that, it's interesting to see that when you moved over there, that there was a punk scene that was thriving uh, we, at we, the time. We, we, got, we got there just at the start of it. Yeah. And I've got to tell you, there were some god-awful bands over there. <laughs> they were, they're very, very high on image and – but. There was man, whew. you know that, that that was one of the, that was. We didn't know at the time, but it, it turned out to be a big advantage mm-hmm. because you know we were put in. They didn't la- know what la- to think of you. Yeah, well, that, we we were very out, much out of step to what, what was going on mm. in London. Completely, we we we'll, we'll loved loved them with bands like with around the time like Status Quo, um, Slade. Um, yeah. yeah, sensational Alex Harvey band, like like that sort of stuff, where all the punk things they were the cool guys, right? But they, you know, they literally lots of them literally couldn't play, so they they weren't all that good. Oh, the Sex Pistols, I saw them a couple mm-hmm. of times. They really had a vibe about them, yeah. And and the record, the first records is just an absolute belter. You know, it's, it's great for that sort of thing. Yeah. But um, you know. But it, it, it helped us because it, it actually was a point of difference that they were sort of like a bit behind, uh-huh. and um, it worked well for us. What can I say? Yeah. You know, we from playing our very first gig, um, 
I was in in the area where we 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 settled in uh, Hammers, the Hammersmith area. Um, it, it was a place called the Red Cow, and we I think we did that late April nineteen seventy six. Uh-huh. Between then and the start of November, the same year, which is what seven seven months, went from playing the Red Cow at Hammersmith to headlining the Hammersmith Odeon, which is about 200 yards down the road. Mm. So that's how quickly it happened. Amazing. It went from no one knows you, seven months later we, we sold out the headline Hammersmith Odeon. Yeah. And in between that broke the um, the attendance record at the Marquee Club twice. There was um, the top three it, uh, were the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. They held the... The attendance records. Uh-huh. We broke the, the, the Hendrix's record two nights in a row. So that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so amazing. And, and uh, uh, that's how quickly it happened. Mm-hmm. From like seven months from going like, who the fuck are these guys, to headlining at, at mm. that stage. But, that, you know, it happens to that only was, it was not a big gig, but it was, I think it, you know, it was sort of like a bit version, a bit ver- bigger version of what, um, I, I can't. Know what the equivalent in Melbourne would be? I oh, like the Palais used to be. Uh-huh. Yeah, about twenty two hundred yep. or something like that. You know, mm. um, and that's what it was. But but it was the landmark show, other than playing sort of Wembley or it was called mm-hmm. Stadium. You know, that you've made it. Yeah, and that it was all within seven months. So it was really, really quick, as it was here in Australia. Yeah, fabulous. Hi. I'm Fiona Lee Maynard and you're listening to Radio Caram, which is what I do whenever I'm anywhere near Seaford Caram High School and Eel Race Road. Oh, Eel I, Race Road, I know that so I know, well. I know, I know. I used to run off my, my old snapping around at 676 Nepean Highway. Yay. Yep. I'm a local gang, I'm a local. I know, I know. And we're back. I've got Mark Whitmore Evans yes. in the house. How lovely is Fiona May? Fiona Lee Maynard. Sorry? How lovely is Fiona? She's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> she's uh, she got a lovely voice. Yeah, she has, hasn't she? Yes. So let's Very, very bubbly. She is. She's come in here before. Yes. yes. Is, she, is, she, is, she, is she is like a an expat like me? Is she from around here or is she, she Yeah, she's, 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 she's faking it by saying Eros Road. No, 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 no. She's not but not far from here. She's probably twenty minutes away All from right. here. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I wanted to ask, did everyone in the band know that they were going to succeed or make it big? Like I know, you know, Angus. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd say, um, yeah. See, uh, that – Because uh, – yeah, yeah, I can answer this in two ways. Yeah. What I thought at the time and what I've sort of become to know, you know, come to realise over the years um, – the first time I played with the band was I went there Saturday, got the record, went back Sunday and played with mm-hmm. them in the hallway, all right? Ralph the Roadie drove me home. because Ralph the Roadie? Uh, Ralph the Roadie, yeah. In the band's track, which was called Swivel Hips, believe it or not, because <laughs> it, it just kept on going across the road. Um, he drove me back to where I used to live at the Paran Hilton. Now, the Paran Hilton is – Yes, the uh, Paran Hilton. I've yeah, heard yeah, about that. Yeah, That's um, – it was really close to Western St Kilda, East St Kilda, but it was the um, – I was quite – actually, I was quite posh actually because my address was um, uh, number 56, 1 Surrey Road, South Yarra. Oh, that sounds pretty flash, it does. doesn't it? it does. Yeah, well, it was the Housing Commission flats. <laughs> and, and we had this gang called the Surrey Road Gang. Oh, no, well, I shouldn't say that. I wasn't actually in the Surrey Road Gang. I had friends that were in the mm-hmm. Surrey and, and I was associated – with, with them, some, with some outings, and our um, our leader was a, a a very rambunctious guy. Was two or three years older than me, whose nickname was um, Baby Huey. Like you ever remember that big duck used to be? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, we had Baby Huey. Yeah. Later on, he changed his um, nickname to Chopper. It was Chopper uh, Chopper Reed? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it was some interesting times. Wow. Jesus. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so go. was John- I, ran, I ran, actually ran into him a couple of times later on. Uh, there was, there was a, some interesting nights out with him. <laughs> at Bojangles? 
Do you know the story about <laughs> Joe Bojangles? No. No, with Chopper? Yeah. We oh Go uh, on, tell us. Well, I was I was there with two of my mates from Rose Tattoo with uh, Mick Cox and Ian Rylands and I could see Chopper. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I never knew him as Chopper, right? Uh, so we're there at Bojangles and, and we got there about after the show, about midnight, and as soon as the, the DJ saw it, was Ian and Mick, they started playing Rose Taylor songs mm-hmm. and, and the ACDC songs and doing all the normal bullshit. And Chopper was at the end <laughs> of the bar and he was oh, I was watching him. I said, oh, we go say hello to him. So anyway, they put some tats on He kept bopping away there. And I just went, hey, Huey, how you doing? He looked at me, funny looks. He went, hey, yeah, I'm good. So I'm, I'm, I'm here with my mates from, a couple of mates from the Tats. Oh, I love the Tats. He said, yeah. He said, you're Mark, you're Mark. Yeah, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you used, you, you used to play with your footy and, and from the from the commission flats. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, how you doing? And all that. And um, he's, he used to have a, um, a funny habit of standing here and moving one – how in depth can I get with you? Oh, I'll oh, tell you. I don't you, mind. you. You can cut it out anyway. No, that's okay. Right. I don't mind. You yeah, say uh, what uh, you want to okay. say. So he's standing there and he was very uncomfortable like that. And because he's moving around, and <laughs> he was known, he was known amongst a couple of to have a, a, an absolutely perennial version of crabs, right? Oh, my goodness. So, so <laughs> he'd be scratching and all that. Scratching right? like that. So, yeah, you're like that. And, and I said, listen, you know, don't tell me your dibs and dabs still playing up, you know. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not that. It's my 410 shotty. It's giving me a problem. I had a 410 <laughs> shotgun down the side oh, of my Oh, my goodness. Hands. So, anyway, while it went on for that, and then, you know, Mick disappeared with a, a couple of uh, people that were, you know, um, can I say transgender? <laughs> uh, and yeah. I was a bit worried about Mick. I couldn't find him anywhere, so we left him and went home. <laughs> so Ian and myself wake up the next morning and we find out it's on the news that someone's been shot at the back of Bojangles. Oh, my goodness. And we've gone, oh, no, there's no Mick. Couldn't find him. <laughs> so I rang up the, the Sakilda police and said, oh, listen, you know, um, we're down one man here. <laughs> And we were at Bojangles last night. Oh, yes, really? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what time did you leave? Oh, we left about this time. We're gone. And we haven't seen him since then. What's he look like? You know, tattoos and all that. And he said, where are you staying? So the Prince of Wales and St Kilda. Mm-hmm. He said, we'll send a car around with around to you. We need we need, need someone to come with us. I said, where? So we need to show someone in the morgue. Oh, what? And I've gone, oh, I'm like, not me. So Rylands went, all right? So we thought, that's it, we've lost Mick. Um, so well, after Ian had left, Mick comes staggering. And you know you know where in the cartoons where you see people and you've got like, like kisses on, like the big lipsticks? Like oh, yes, standing, yes, Or you yes, come yes, in like yes. that and it was like, eh, and I thought, where the hell have you been? We thought you were dead. And I said, what, what's your fucking problem? All I did was try a, try a few frocks on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we wait, it's this guy had been married, he's, he's called Sam the Turk. He'd been he'd oh. been shot out the back. Yes, that, and I think that's in the in the, the Chopper movie. Yes, yes, now, I we, remember we, it. Now. We, we were with we were with him that night, and we, when we left, he went out the back. Oh wow! But, but um, my memory of the thing is is he, he went out to the the, the wrong or oh, probably for for um for baby Huey uh, for Chopper he went out to the the, the right car park because they were waiting for him in another car park. I think they were waiting for him out the front with all the shotguns and all that. And um, he was out the back, went at the back, and that was it. <laughs> Good night, Sammy the Turk. I know. Oh, thanks for coming. That's awful. Oh, sure. Well, I, 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 I know. I, I know. I, 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 know. I told I'm, you. I mean, but that's still it's good. It's all history. Um, so going back to ACDC, was George like always the mentor of the band? Like it was common knowledge, sort of that it was Malcolm's band. But was George always oh, the oh. influencer because it was the yeah, older yeah, brother? That, 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 yeah, that's what I was, was going to say. It's always been Malcolm's band. Yeah. Like the first day um, so when Ralph the Roadie was driving me home, to, yeah, that's how we got into that. Um, we just got out of the car uh, at the van. He said, okay, listen, he said, I think it's going to go really well for you here. He said, I think you're in. So oh, good. He said, but I said, I'll give you some friendly advice. He said, I'll tell you two things. It's Malcolm's band. Mm. 
And the second thing, he said, we're going to be in England by April next year. No, we're going to be in England 12 months from now. And I went, fantastic, mm. thank you. You, you. you would have said, oh, listen, it's Malcolm's band and we're going to be playing a gig on the moon in 12 months. Yeah. You know, you and know, you would have yeah, believed it. Yeah, I would have believed it. Anyway... And I said to Graham a few months ago, oh, they said they're going to be in England in 12 months. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right? That's not going to happen. And it didn't. We went, it was 12 months and three days. Yeah. <laughs> they missed me by three, they're only three days off. There you go. Close so to it. Malcolm was very driven, as was Angus. Um, and the band was very confident. And we, 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 were, we were, you know, we're pretty sure it was going to work. I don't think anyone would have thought it would work. As, I'd still be here 50 years later talking mm. about it. Mm. But, um, yeah, it was – with Angus and Malcolm, see, the, the, it wasn't like just putting a band together and say, oh, we'll, we'll put a band together, we'll try and get a line-up together and maybe three or six months we'll do some – we'll try and see if we can do, play some gigs, mm-hmm. right? It wasn't that. Because they've had George to use as a blueprint – George was in possibly the biggest band in Australia, mm-hmm. right? That's normal to them. So they said, we'll put a band together and we'll record an album with George. So it was all those years of trying to find people and once they got the lineup right, it just went bang. Yeah. So the, 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 their starting point could have been like a, a, a high water level for band that had been together for three or four years. Mm. So there was, you know... It wasn't easy, but it was a, you know. So w- when it came to music, Malcolm was just in charge. M- M- Malcolm, know, Malcolm was, like it was, it was. He didn't Malcolm suffer thing. fools slightly. No, no, he it, it didn't. But what what he used to do with with uh, the TNT album, uh, the Dirty Deeds album, and Let There Be Rock, we all recorded them the same way. All the songs would be written. And recorded during that two week period. Yeah, I was going to ask about that next. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it was. We go in and Phil and myself we might have heard one or two of the riffs, but we nothing had to be written in. All the backing tracks had be written and recorded in the first week, and the second week was for solos and vocals and all that and mixing. So all the all those albums were done in a two week period. Mm. It was, you must and, have been and, and we tired. put it we put it together, and and usually the first. One or two tracks or takes of it would have it, but they're all written in the studio, and so people would say, "Oh man, that the band sounds just like the record," because mm. there was nothing added. There might be some hand caps, uh, claps, or some percussion. They'd say, "Oh, listen, they, you know, it just sound, just sounds the band sounds exactly like the record." Well, it was because basically it was the band playing live in the studio. Mm. Yeah. So, so did they impose like a cert- certain way of doing things? No, you left. You le- you were left to the your own devices to, you know, just play as you did. Uh-huh. Uh, but think, you know, think you might get some direction from play. Like, but Malcolm would say, particularly with the TNT album, he said, uh, he'd it, show, show you the chords, this is what, how the song's going to go, and he'd run the feel a bit to get it going. He said, well, this one's going to be our street fighting man, mm-hmm. or this one's going to be our brown sugar, or this one's going to be our jumping Jack Flash. Mm-hmm. You know, it... it, it he used those as a blueprint. Mm-hmm. And plus he had George and Harry then, and George took me under his wing too. George, George like Malcolm, uh, uh, George and Malcolm are both, oh, there you go. I, I don't know what it is when I talk about the guys in ACDC mm-hmm. and, and George and Bond, I tend to speak in the present tense. Mm-hmm. I don't quite know why I do that, maybe because they're, they're all sort of still very evident. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. But, um, you know, George took me under his wing, and he's just a knockout. I don't play bass anything like George, mm-hmm. but he was just. Um, we got very different styles. I'm I'm very very direct, and he's very notey and and sort of bouncy sort of stuff, mm-hmm. which is great. He's he's more like a like a, a, a bass player, like a soul bass player, okay. like you know, like Motown sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If, the, the big, if you listen to say. The bass playing in single high voltage, uh, and then then listen to stuff that's later on. The bass playing in high voltage is very notey and very bubbly and shifts around the place. Okay. Where my style of bass playing is very direct okay. and very very sort of, you know, straight down the line. Yeah, that's how you tell the difference. Yeah. So did you get on 
with anyone in particular in the band? Like, yeah, I, I got I got on pretty well with with everyone really. Mm-hmm. But being in a band, living in each other's pockets, you all have your your, your moments. Um, I used to share a room with Phil. We were mm-hmm. very solid mates, very good mates with with uh, also Malcolm and Bond. Mm-hmm. Bond Bond used to spend a lot of time away from the bands. Right? We'd only see the Bond when he well, was a lot older as well. Well, you, well, you, there you go. When I joined the band, I was nineteen. He was twenty nine, yeah. and I couldn't. I'm working the band with a twenty nine year old. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck, you know? He was. That was he's, he's, he, we, yeah, we say, where's the old man? He was the old man. Yeah. You know? And then once he, he, he um, he paled up with a lady in in London, a, a, an old flame of his from Adelaide called Silver. We used to call him Rodden Brit. Because they used to have the same jackets and the same hairstyles. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, uh, Rod Stewart, yeah, Britt, yeah, 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 Eklund. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in, in a somewhat disparaging manner. Oh, <laughs> I get you, Cole. Uh, oh, yeah. I, 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 oh, 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 yeah. That's all right. That's cool. Mm. We're, we're having Melbourne bitter here. Yeah. Hang on, I'm in the right. house. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Um, so. I did read that you you and Bond got on pretty well. Yeah, you we paint did. him as a kind man. Yeah, oh, he's very generous. Mm. Generous generous to a fault. Um, he, he would give you the shirt off his back. He's just a – he had a – people have this impression of Bond and it, uh, it's, um, it's been this outrageous rock and roll mm-hmm. star, this – like, like they have a, a, a misapprehension about his height too. When they, when people first meet Bond, or if they, if they even recognised him, mm-hmm. they'd be surprised about his height. Because I used to be in bars everywhere in Europe, you know, all through the UK. Once we got to know him, people come and say, "She's your mate. Looks like Bond Scott." <laughs> now a lot of people say that because no one, had, no one would actually realise. That he, it was him. It, it, the height he was because I'm, as you can see here in the studio, I'm not a tall guy. I'm barely five foot six. Well, he, I heard that if you were a lot taller, you wouldn't have got in the band. Well, it's quite right? possible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's quite possible. But um, but I was. Or if you look at the, look at the old photos, I look like I could be playing in the ruck for Carlton mm. this week. <laughs> I, I look like I'm really tall. Yes, but, you do actually. Yeah, because then because uh, Angus and Malcolm were both. Both barely five foot. The, the, uh, Angus is the same height as Angry. Uh, uh, Angry's a yes. you know a Collingwood five footer. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so they're all, all little guys. Mm. What about Phil? Was he? he he's a, he's a, he's shorter than me. He, he was a couple inches short, shorter than me. But yeah, right. he was. But um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not tall, but yeah. I thought, I, was, I thought I was tall when I was in the band. <laughs> there was an um, episode on Australian Story last year called On the Brink on the ABC. Um, yeah. Did you catch that at, at all? It was about Bon Scott. Refresh me. Um, it was all, you know, family and friends got together and opened up on him, uh, opened up about Bon and um, he, he, Bon's brother um, just wanted – to do oh. this one story and then that oh, was it. Oh, he was, was never going to ever that, speak that, about him ever again. Oh, is that the one with Derek on it? Derek, his brother his Derek. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, yes. Only went for 30 minutes but yeah, it's on Australian I, Story. I, 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 I love Australian I Story. I love Australian Story. Of, yes, I, I did see that. I, I, I watched it with raised eyebrows. You weren't approached? <laughs> huh? You weren't approached to? Uh... Oh, uh, I could have been. I've been approached to do a lot of things like that but I now habitually – I won't do it because I've said everything I I, I, I have to say. All all, yeah. all I would be doing would be repeating myself. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's a, a real point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So but you yeah. got. Yeah. Go. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, go. So you got to see a lot of bands in the UK, um, and you got to meet some interesting people mm-hmm. in your time. Yes. Um, I loved hearing the story about George Harrison. How you met George? George. But uh, well, you met him here. You didn't meet him. Yeah, overseas. I, I met him after actually this. Yeah, I, that, that's my my other musical life is. Oh, and, and, and yeah, and buy, buying buying and selling vintage guitars. Yes. that's what I do. It's have you got fun. a bit of a collection? I have. All bases. No, no, a lot of a lot of nice other things like. I fell in love with Gibson J two hundred. Yeah, the, the acoustic guitar that. Elvis Presley used in the Jailhouse Rock. I remember him opening up the case and it was this, you know, caramel light brown coloured case and it had pink 
lining in. So I've got to – just a case no. I've got to get one of those. So I've got I've, – I've went through a crazy stage. I've still got quite a few of them. Mm. Um, JT one is these acoustic guitars that are just just brilliant. They look like a cowboy guitar. And then Elvis in Jailhouse Rock was named Deke Rivers, and he wore he wore cowboy shirts, high bar C cowboy shirts. And I have a a, a collection of cowboy shirts. Uh, there's about some of them I've been been wanting to get framed over the years. Uh-huh. I haven't got to it yet. But there's about 120 of them all together. But there's about about 50 that are vintage from the 1940s and 1950s. Oh wow! One of Roy Rogers shirts and and one of uh, Cisco Kids shirts. You, you probably you're, no, you're, no. You're, 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 the tats no. don't let you wear them. Huh? Tats don't let you wear them. I I, 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 do, I do wear a couple of. I have worn a couple on the stage, but I have to cut the sleeves out of them so I can wear them. Because oh. I, I, I butchered a couple of them. I've only butchered up ones I've, I've had doubles of. Okay. okay. But actually, I, I guess uh, standard stage apparel for the tats over the years has been like a biker's vest with a roast and, tattoo patch on it. Yeah. And I've just got my Denim. got, got my uh, new patch last week. Oh. I got Yeah, I got, I got the old one was worn out, so I've got a, a new well, – there was a few – Patches of water during the week, and I got a new one. No, nice. oh, well, they're very. I should have bought it in because it's, it. uh, it's 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 really happening. It's just a, a very heavy denim, black denim vest, but with the the um, the bikers patch on the back. So where okay. you're playing Saturday night? Um, at Burvale. I know. Yeah. It, where, is that near Ferntree Gully or? It's it, no, no, it's none of wanting. I none think of, none. None of wanting. No, because yeah. my brother said. Because he lives in Ferndrigal and he said that, oh, oh it's I quite, heard that, 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 that they yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he probably heard us from Ferndrigal. Yeah, from the gully. <laughs> he probably did. Ferndrigal is another one. I just spent quite a time the there. The gully. I, 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 I used to get pie-eyed in the, in the middle pub in Ferndrigal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. What so, about the Pier Hotel Frankston? Have you played that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Many yeah, yeah I bet. It just be, what was it called? It was. It's 21st yeah, century. That's the one. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh, revolving man. dance floor. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. The, the, I used to call it a revolting dance floor. Oh. <laughs> oh man, you just and the you. grand across the road. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pure, vines. Yeah, yeah. Vi- <laughs> yeah the, um, as opposed to the pines. Yes, <laughs> yes. A, yeah. I, I had a, a, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, all, that, all those pubs and, and the, the South Side Six. Yeah. And it's the Sandring Home Hotel, the yep. Men's Trannies. Home Hotel. Oh yeah, Trannies. That's Trannies. <laughs> that's Friday how, night Trannies. <laughs> uh, I would transform it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Were Friday night Trannies. Well, there was Darby's in Caulfield. I, I too. thought you might have been, you know, Gosh. frost rocking up on a Friday night. <laughs> and the Chevron on a Tuesday night. Oh, Chevron. I've punched, oh. I've punched my way in, in and out of that place many times. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, tell me, is there any um, favourite songs that you liked pa- playing in that period, in that early period when you were in? AC/DC? Oh, oh, you mean ACDC? Yeah, songs? A, 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 fa- a fave. Um, yeah. Overdose. Uh, yeah, it's called. Uh, I think it's called Overdose. I knew. It's on Let There Be Rock. Okay. Yeah. To me, and this is purely my opinion, yes. and I've got it. I'm biased. I, I, I sort of think "Let There Be Rocks" the first real ACDC album. It just sounds like the mm-hmm. band. There was albums, four really good albums before, like High Voltage, TNT, Dirty Deeds. Mm-hmm. But the "Let There Be Rock" album was called after we come back from the UK the first time. Okay, and to me, that that's where the band really stepped up. And then there's a run of let to be rock, um, uh, power rage and highway to hell, and I've, I was uninvolved in the let to be rock. A little bit of power rage, but not 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 much. Mm-hmm. But I reckon let to be rock, power rage and highway to hell. Those three records are about as good a three record run than any band's done. Mm. They're, they're they're just all just great records for their for their thing. You yes. know, I had a bloke on. My show, mm. and he, his favourite all time ACDC songs, Ain't No Fun. But when there be a millionaire, yeah. that's that's that's, that's another his, cracker. Yeah, I think that I think I, I get I get messed up with what 
songs were on what album because they, they've been mixed up for all the international stuff. I think yeah. that's off Dirty Deeds. Yeah. yeah. I, I love so. that song. We never yeah. played that song live. Really? Never played that well. song. And strangely enough, long way to the top, we, when I was with the band, we only played that, I don't know, maybe a couple of dozen times. Okay. And, and it disappeared out of the set. I don't know if it's ever been done since then. Mm. And that's probably, for Australia, it's probably one of the most mm. iconic worst mm. tattoos. Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> Transposed, Indeed, yeah, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I'll get the bands picked up. Yeah. Yeah. So, One of those iconic ACDC songs. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Memor- memorable gig. Memorable gig. Or, or favourite venue that you've played at. Memorable gigs. We were employed during school holidays, would have been the winter school, like by June, July holidays, 1975, to play four lunchtime concerts in the Miss Melbourne store in the city, the Myers, <laughs> right? Oh. Right? Are we going to put a half-hour show Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? And we, they played for, at, at the time where I remember how much we got for it and it was an astronomical amount of money for the time. Really? Well, I just could not believe it. Oh. And it was like, how good is this? And we're still going to be doing gigs at night. So we had to hire a whole production, stage gear, everything. Uh-huh. So it's static there for four days. Okay. So Michael Brown he, he said, this is what we're going to do. I said, you're kidding me? He said, no. And he was just laughing. He was just, he told me, this is going to be great, guys. What are you talking about? And then he said, we're booked for four days. They've paid us. And he said, if this goes to four days, it's a fucking miracle. <laughs> and, and he said, all right, okay. So anyway... So we'll, have, we'll, we'll do it. So we, we get changed out the back and they come out and Brown has come in and he's rubbing his hands like they're like, 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 like it was a five-year-old kid at Christmas. He said, won't make it past the first song. <laughs> and he said, no, no. So we, know, we used to start with TNT. So the band just go, boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. That. We got the boom out. And it was just like this human wave, a human tsunami of 13 and 14-year-old girls surged over. That's it. <laughs> bon had, had to we, – we, we all had to take off and run. I, I ran out the back and hid in the, the, the change rooms. Bon Gosh. got Bon got chased. It was it was in, in yeah, yeah, Burke Street. He got ended up chased out of the building into Lonsdale Street and he caught a tram back to where we were staying at, at the Freeway Gardens. It was in North Melbourne. With a, he, he lost his T-shirt. He had his jeans on and one shoe. Oh, my. <laughs> it was like the whole – it was just like – it was just this giant rolling mall of young girls. It was just – it literally went up straight over the top of us. <laughs> and that was it. We didn't even – didn't even get the first – Bond didn't – didn't strike a blow. He didn't oh. say it. He didn't open his Did mouth. Did you go back the next day? No, gone. They it's all the young girls. All the girls wiped the whole thing. They stole everything out of the place. <laughs> Did they? Oh, they wiped the place out and said, "Oh, we don't really need you tomorrow." <laughs> and Michael had the you know the newspaper gave him. He said, oh, it's not, it "Won't make it through the first song." <laughs> and we you got we got boom, 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 boom. That was it. You got paid though. Uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, we got paid. Your got money's paid. in the back. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so anyway, you do. A lot with ACDC yeah, events heaps. still, and you do like a, a Bon Scott spoken word, or like you do Bon Fest. What's Bon Fest? Bon Fest is a uh, a started off um, about twenty years ago in Kirimuir, uh, which is in um, near uh, Perth in Scotland. Mm-hmm. It's up in between Dundee and Aberdeen. I, I know this so much. I, I spend quite a bit of time in mm-hmm. Scotland. I have rarely realised in Emperor. And um yeah, it's to celebrate Bon Scott in, in Bon Scott's birthplace. Mm-hmm. And uh it started about twenty years ago, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I got involved with it when they decided they wanted to put a statue up of Bon. Oh. Because yes. uh, Kerry Mew is a beautiful little it's not a city. It's a like it's like a, virtually like a village. I, I, in, I don't know how many people live in Kirimia, but I'd be surprised if it's any more than ten thousand. Right? Mm-hmm. It's this beautiful place, and the the uh, the thing that they were known for before being the birthplace of Bond uh, in the this, 
in the city square, and the city square is tiny, it's just virtually a junction of three mm-hmm. different roads, there's a there's a statue of Peter Pan because oh. um, the story of Peter Pan was written by a guy called J.M. Barry, mm-hmm. who yes. was also from Kirimu. Yes. So there's got Peter Pan in the city centre and you walk out maybe 150 metres out and there's a statue of Bond. So Bond's like Peter Pan too because he doesn't get any older. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he is. Yeah, it's great. But it, uh, but it, it's put Kerry Muir on the map. Um, uh, it celebrates it celebrates so it all things year? Bond. One, one year. And the reason I got involved, there was – a uh, the statue, I I don't think it's happened too often before. The statue was completely funded by fans. Oh, that's the amazing! Fans pay for so when it round the bottom, everyone has donated. It, it, it's it's it, they're noted on the on the statue. It's amazing. Yeah, and so that's why I that's why I got involved with it. I was supposed to, this is what we're doing, and I had I had the, I had the um the uh, proof to uh, unveil the statue. It would have been in. I think oh, I, I could be wrong. Maybe two th- ten years ago. Yeah, round about that. Yeah, a while ago. And he's got a statue in Fremantle as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's got yeah. one in Fremantle. One in Fremantle is a bit, bit, a bit different. It is. Yeah, yeah. Who's that statue of? <laughs> I know. Yeah, did you think that too? Mm. Yeah, yeah, they got his ripple soul desert boots on, right? That yeah, they, they got that. You say, oh, he's got ripple soul desert boots. He must be Bond. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Kerry Muir was fantastic. Mm. Um, there, there, there is here's a bit of trivia for you. Um, Are you going to read the bottom of it? No, I was going to flip it up. I'm top? just I'm just intrigued. <laughs> I've, 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 what does it say? It says Melbourne bitter. Excuse me, one moment. <laughs> I've got a story here. One moment. Okay. Bond's family. His, his his father uh, and uh, his uh, father and uncles had a um, a tea rooms in um, Kerrymuir, and it's a Scots tea rooms, and they invented gingerbread. Oh, yeah, that that the original gingerbread come from from that that place, and and that the, that's you know that's what the Scott family oh, is famous for. Besides, Bond is inventing gingerbread. Oh. I'm You're probably stuffy. probably the first person I've ever told that. Oh, this is a scoop. Intriguing. <laughs> Stop the scoop. presses. I know. There, it is. Okay, so moving right On. along. Yeah. So now I'm going to talk about Axel Rose. So Axel Rose did the lead vocals for ACDC in 2016. Yeah. What's your thoughts on him? He did the rock and – what is it? The rock bust world tour. Rock or bust. Yeah, due to um, Brian Johnson's hearing problems. What are your thoughts on Axel Oh, Axel's, Axel's okay. great and Gums and Roses. And, yeah, you know, I've got to tell you, um, at the time I thought um, I, I, my understanding was that Brian um, was out mm-hmm. and he was, whether it was out or whatever happened to him to mm-hmm. stop him, um, and they had some gigs to do and... I thought it was an inspired choice. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I've got to tell you, um, the bits and pieces that, that I saw uh, on like on online, I thought he did all the Bond Scots, uh, all the Bond stuff, really well. I thought it, it was a, it was a, it was such a, a left field choice. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a great his idea. His voice grates on me, but. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like oh. his, I don't like his voice. But I, I thought this is either going to be really good, or it's going to be a fucking train uh-huh. smash. <laughs> but you know, I, but I thought, I thought, I thought it was okay. I think the general traditional fans are up in arms because I, I don't think there was a, a, a groundswell. So I didn't, I didn't seem to like what to what happened to Brian, mm-hmm. which, but it was all sort of very abrupt, mm-hmm. and you know, okay. Yeah. And there was, you know, all this cloak and dagger stuff saying, well, you know, it's like different sort of things of a history of any band. It's all like, mm-hmm. oh, no, that's what happened. It's just conspiracy, conspiracy things like, you mm. know, like Lee Harvey Oswald was going to be the next singer on ACDC or whatever, you know. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, but, but you know, I, I believe the only way it makes sense for ACDC, oh, no, no, I can say that because it's just my opinion. 
I reckon it'd be great if they did one more tour and had the lineup of Brian, Phil, Cliff, <coughs> Stevie, and Angus. Because mm-hmm. that's the closest you're going to get to the, the, the back and back lineup, mm-hmm. which is which is accepted as the the worldwide lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they're due, it, due to play in them. Yeah, in Los Angeles. So. Oh, I saw that that big thing over. Yeah, I'm, uh, I get there the day after. Oh, it's yeah, good time. <laughs> Don't like ACDC, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I love it, but I'm just saying maybe maybe yeah. they'll play a show afterwards. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, yeah, well, well if they're going to may, – maybe, but I, I have a – I'm surprised that, that – I would be surprised if they don't do some more shows. I think they but, have but, to. but 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 I, I I I would I would think it being such a big deal the first show in maybe seven or eight years, yeah. I would think it would be part of their contract with that um, organisation is don't advertise any more shows so this is done. Yeah, that'll yeah. be part of the contract. So they say, oh no, I, I won't go to that. I, I can see them. Somewhere else, mm-hmm. yeah. That would, I'm sure, that would be part of the deal, and I would be really, really surprised if they don't do some more shows. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it's time, and I think it's probably t- maybe time to tie everything up and have yeah. one more go around. Mm. Yeah. Although the Stones are still going. No, oh, that's mm. true. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, yeah. Keith, Keith has been dead for about 35 years. Yes. You know? <laughs> He's doing great. He's, 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 he's something else, isn't he? <laughs> he is. I, I, saw a, I, saw, I saw a thing on Facebook it was, uh, the other day. It was Keith Richards with he, two of his daughters. Yeah, he had are, twins, didn't he? Oh, I, I don't know, if they're, but they're, they're gorgeous looking yeah. daughters. Mm-hmm. And he said, please clean up the world because we, 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 we want Keith's daughters that, to leave a nice planet for Keith, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like. Yeah. He's something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, what yeah. a great guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Yeah. Now, I, need, I want to ask this question. Okay, so mm-hmm. how did the discussion go when you and the band parted ways? Well, it's fairly brief. Mm. How, you know, how on earth did you feel at that time? I felt I, it's, it was strange. Um, I actually was uh, – Shocked? No, because I knew it was relieved. Com- no, relieved. Yes. I, I knew it was coming because what happened? Um, the guys threw a, a, a 21st birthday mm-hmm. party for me in a, in a German beer cellar in London, which was great. And then one of the one of the crew had had a bit to drink, uh, and his brother was along with him, mm-hmm. and who I knew, and, and they all had a bit to drink, and. Um, Scotty said, oh, it's not going to go, you know, go to the toilet like that. And uh, I started talking to his brother, my well, brother of a friend, a really close friend. And he said to me, um, it seems to be going really well here, your, your party in the band. I said, yeah. He said, so how come you're leaving? <laughs> Gosh. I said, well, I don't, I, that's mm. the first I've heard of it. Yeah. And then Scotty come out and he said, listen, Hey, what, what, what's this about? I'm leaving the band, and Scotty sort of broke, broke, mm. he broke down. So, oh, well, the bus, so we, we walked out and we went to the speakeasy. So I left my 21st birthday party. Aww. Yeah, so I and uh, that was um, nothing was said at all. Like you know, yeah, yeah, a bit uh, like uh, when uh, you first started. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody yeah. Told so you that, that was it. So I I, 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 I was like. I didn't know what to do, so I, I thought I'd, 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 you know, I'm probably gone, you know. And then we went and did some more gigs, and nothing was said. Yeah, okay. And then, um, I mean, there would be tensions in a band. Uh, yeah, there was, there right. was, there was a lot of tension at that at that time. It's impossible not to have tension within a band. Well, you know that that band, you know, um, there was a lot of tension around that band anyway, because that, that was a time around the time when Dirty Deeds was released. Uh, in England, we're doing a tour for Dirty Deeds. Uh, the American record company Atlantic weren't happy with Dirty Deeds. They refused to release it and knocked it mm-hmm. back. Uh, we'd lost a deal in America, uh, and they were hell bent on. They basically said, "You've got to replace a singer." They they said, "Singer, they, yeah, mm-hmm. they wanted me out," you know. Um, but it's all, it wasn't going to happen. And, and actually when, um, after it all went down, um, Michael Brown, the manager at the time, said, listen, when, when Angus and Malcolm 
gave me the call and said they wanted to change bass players. I said, we've got something to speak to about. He said, I thought they were, they were going to tell me they were going to change Bond, right? Um, but anyway, um, yeah, they got called to a meeting. Mm-hmm. And I was walking, that, uh, the meeting was Angus and Malcolm's apartment they had in uh, Notting Hill Gate. I was with Phil and walking around and I said, hey, listen, mate, this, this, this is not good. Mm, and he said, oh, I said, well, he said, what do you know? I said, well, I know a lot. I'm not, he said, I know I'm gone. He said, yeah, well, you are. I oh. said, I wish it was any, you know, any different. And then um, we sat down and, and, Mal- and Michael Brown said, listen, Mark, uh, this meeting has been drawn mainly about you. Uh, the guys want to change bass players. I said, well, it's up to them. The guys want to do that. Well, mm-hmm. that, that's what they do. And Malcolm said, yeah, 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 it, it's nothing personal. We just want to get a bass player who can sing. Mm. I went, I, I, can, I can sing. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was breaking into a song and singing a Frank Sinatra song. Because no one ever asked to sing backing vocals. Like, yeah, I, can, yeah. I can sing. Mm-hmm. I've done backing vocals in the other band I've been in. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, Bomb was just looking at the floor and shaking his head and Phil was like, fuck this, and uh, Angus didn't really say anything. Angus and Malcolm were little guys that, and they were on the couch together and they were like, stuck on this couch or, or like, or, like compressed, like, <laughs> what's going to happen, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually knew it was coming. But um, it was awful at the time because the, the, the band, I, I, I must I must say, it meant every, everything to me. But... Um, it was not an an easy band to work in. Okay. Yeah, pretty grueling. Yeah, pretty grueling, and it was it was um, tiring. I don't know constant. if tiring is. It was it was stressful, mm. you know, um, and you know it was it just the, the way it was. You know, a- Angus is very very intense, mm-hmm. um, and you know I I, I think he. Um, he has never backed off one inch when he's playing. He could be sick as a mm-hmm. dog, right? And he just goes out, goes out and just leaves. I've seen, mm. him, seen him coming off stage, throwing up, almost passing out, right? And he just leaves everything out there. Mm. And he gives it all. Oh, oh, you, you will ne- not find a more committed mm-hmm. performer anywhere that I've seen. And I think he has – he – it specs maybe the same from uh, very easy. To, for, I think it, it would be easy. I think if you if Ang- Angus's mindset to look at other people in a band and think, oh, well, they're not they're not pulling their weight. Mm-hmm. You know, um, well, that's what, probably yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just going to say, like, I loved hearing the that you um, when you did leave the band, you booked a flight. You know, back home, and you just made it in time to surprise your mother for her yeah, birthday, you, like you said earlier on. Like I thought yeah. that was sweet. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I came back for two weeks because um, it coincided with my mother's birthday, which is May the second, and she was still living in the Proud Hilton. And um, uh. yeah, so I went back there, and so you know, like, and it was so strange because I, I, I was obviously pretty worn out and stressed out at the time because mm-hmm. I knocked on the door, and although she wasn't expecting me. Um, she opened the door and looked at me and she didn't – obviously I saw a look on her face. Cause I, I had all my hair cut off, so I used to have really long hair. Mm-hmm. I'd come back and with short hair. Um, and she stopped and looked at me and went – it would have been a period of a couple of seconds where you went – Is that you? Yes. Yes. She, well, she didn't know it was me. Oh. I said, Mum, happy birthday, it's, you know. Oh. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And she goes, oh, well, Mum, she said, what, she, she, what's happened, you know. So mm-hmm. oh, I'm just back in you know, but yeah, but, but um, and she said, um, she sat down and she started crying. Oh, I said, oh, mum, that's okay. That's she said, so I'm happy. Nice. She said, it's not that bad. They said, you look absolutely awful. Oh, <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> thank you. I'll, I'll be on my way now. Thanks, yeah. mum. But she, but she was just being honest. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah I, I, I was never a big guy. I'd lost a lot of weight, uh-huh. and yeah, it was, it was it was the last month or so it was pretty stressful. Yeah, yeah. Do okay. you keep in contact with Phil at all or anyone like that? Uh, I kept in contact with Phil whenever he, he got to Melbourne or Sydney where I was. He'd always get in contact with me. He's an Essendon supporter. Mm-hmm. He? he used to rip me. <laughs> um, uh, and um, Mel I used to see quite a bit. And whenever yeah. Bomb was in town, uh, he'd 
quite often he'd, he'd stay with myself and my, my first wife, Kobe. Okay. Um, but uh, after Bond passed, uh, we, we had a, a uh, an ongoing legal problem. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Which was finally resolved That's appropriately, mm-hmm. and, but that put a bit of a wedge in it. Okay. You know. mm-hmm. But he's, he's back in the band now, Phil, isn't it? That's what I've heard. I... I I I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. Um, I'm. Um, what do you think of Phil's drumming? The best. I think he's mm-hmm. fantastic. But, you know, I I think Angus, Malcolm, and Phil Phil were put on this earth to play in ACDC. Okay. Mm-hmm. They are just. They are. And, and it was very fortunate because we're having Bon out the front too. Yeah. Um, it, it's. You know, playing bass with those in a band with those four guys, mm-hmm. armchair ride. Yeah. You know, just look uh, at each other. Yeah, and because uh, you, yeah. you know, we never rehearsed. Yeah. Not not one no, day did we rehearse. You're that tight. Yeah, yeah. We never rehearsed because mm-hmm. like we, we'd write the songs in the studio and then we'd just go out and play them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we we did some checks to make sure all the gears work when we we changed went to England and bought all the new gear back here. Yeah, make yeah. sure everything works, but we never rehearsed. We didn't have to. Mm. No, you didn't have to. Okay, so I want to ask this question mm-hmm. too. You were um, cruelly denied the induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame mm-hmm. in 2003. Yeah. Along with some other former bandmates. Mm-hmm. Not great. Who decided on that? Um, it's, it's an interesting thing that I, 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 I don't wanted to ask the question. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> As I said before we started, nothing's off the table. Okay. I'll, I'll, but uh, I can I can tell you actually what happened is that um, a friend of mine, a, a, a really can you big, hear the ice huh? in the esky? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, folks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, a, a guy called Murray Englehart, a, 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 an author and a, a, a roast tattoo. Fishing in Ardo, uh-huh. called me and said, listen, you know, ACDC are getting inducted into the Hall of, Hall of Fame. I said, oh, it's fantastic, you know, mm-hmm. great. And he said, you're in too. Okay. And I said, well, that's very interesting, but there's something wrong here. <laughs> you know, that's that, that's not going to happen. And he said, well, why wouldn't I? I said, I don't know, but it just, I, it's, I just – not quite sure. So I had a guy managing me at the time, uh, one of the guys who was running um, Paul Graham Records, and he said, oh, so that's great to go and do that, you know. I said, well, you know, I I just don't think it's going to happen. He said, well, it's, not, it's, just, it's out of character. So my first initial feeling was to write back and say no, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I decline it. And Riley, Riley said to me, he said, don't do that because what if, it, if it's, you know, it's, it's, it is as it seems. It's your right. Huh? It's your right to be yeah, 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 inducted. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And, and anyway, so it all went along for a while and then um, they didn't contact me but it got out through the press that they'd um, uh, revoked my mm. induction, all right? And uh, they, they said because I didn't reach the criteria to make it in. Pardon? Yeah. Who, and who so, decides so, on that? I, I don't know. And uh, Rolly got his back. He said, oh, well, we've got in contact. What are the criteria? I said, oh, we don't disclose that. Yeah. But anyway, so it was I, I don't know what happened, but you know, I've got to tell you I'm absolutely fine with it. The band going in. I mean, it, you, you I were, think that's fine. Yeah, you rounded. You know, you were in the first classic lineup. Like you were in yeah, the first. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's. I think from it, the beginning. I think it, yeah. I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that that the, the the American Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is based in America. Okay. You know, so uh, the, 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 the the band wasn't really sort of visible. In America, with me in it anyway. Okay. So I never toured America, with it. but I have no problem with them, and the, the band deserved to get. I have no issue. Mm-hmm. So did Cliff get? Did yeah, Cliff. Yeah, Cliff's in there. Yes, yeah. that's okay. that, but that. That's that's appropriate. You're okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not angry. <laughs> 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 okay. So, what were your thoughts when you first saw Brian Johnson play? Like, 
Oh, that was strange. You that know, was, especially was, when you've only heard Bond sing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a, that was a black back in black tour. Uh, I was at, in, the, in, was in, the, in Sydney at the Music Bowl. I saw oh, the, the Music Bowl. Yeah, that, that was the ones with they the did. The Angels and Swanee. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was at the Sydney one. It was it, it was the third time they tried to do it because I was washed out for two days, mm-hmm. okay. and it was just a little, little bit odd um, hearing the songs, and and particularly the Bond songs, and mm-hmm. Bond's not singing. Yeah, it was a bit yeah, but um, I, I found it on the night a little bit difficult, mm-hmm. um, but the conclusion I came to with all that. Mm-hmm. Was that if I found it difficult just listening to the songs one night, Angus and Malcolm and Phil and Cliff had gone and rehearsed all the stuff, found a new singer, mm-hmm. and they're facing up to that every night and doing it. Mm. And I got to tell you, I got all the respect in the world for them for doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I would. I I can't I can't think of a band that is so successfully. Replaced a, so, a such an important member of the band, mm-hmm. and the band is then because the Highway to Hell was um, uh, double platinum in the states. That's mm. a big, that's a big album, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. And then bang, new singer, and then it's gone. And I still, I, I still think um, they got it right. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, with, with back in black, I, I think I, still, I, I, I think it's still. In America, it's the second highest album ever. Mm. The Thrill is the only album. Is it? Top. And, and in America, um, ACDC sell more back catalogue records than the Beatles. And I tell you, if you beat the Beatles in the second place on something, I've got to tell you, that's a, that's a, mm. to put the Beatles in the silver medal position, that's pretty handy, you mm-hmm. know. That wouldn't be happening too many times. Yeah. So yeah, it, that, that was yeah, it, was, it was difficult. It, it was just it was just a shit of a thing to happen. Mm. But um, with Bond, you know, it's such a a weird thing. I don't know if if, if it's more sort of evident in me over the years or what. But you know, a lot of people, you know, used to you know Bond because Bond had a a pretty full dance card. You know, mm-hmm. he was he was very active in a lot of a lot of areas, mm. and. Um, he just lived for the moment, and mm-hmm. it, I, I remember people saying, "Oh, if he died tomorrow, man, he's, you know, he's had a full life. You know, he, mm-hmm. used, to, he used to give it a good working out. You know, mm. but he was, you know, he's he's um, he could be along with other people, some people like good mates of mine, like say with Ian Rylands from X and Rose Tattoo and Mick Cox from Rose Tattoo. Um, Sometimes they could be their own worst enemies, mm. you know. And yeah. if, if, and I don't want to sound all like it's love and hearts here, but I just wish Bond cared about himself as much as he cared about other people, because mm. he he just that did so much and showed so much generosity and kindness to people. He should have left a little bit over for himself, mm. but he just really, yeah, was um, yeah. Okay, there you go. Don't okay. suppose you ever. Went to Bond and said, "Listen, I've got a song here. We should write together." <laughs> you know? Yeah, oh, well, I, I threw some ideas into the pot, but the, the the guy that you would you would throw the ideas to would be Malcolm. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah but I okay. thought Bond wrote a lot of the songs. That... Uh, but Bond wrote a lot of lyrics. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, he, okay. He, played, he played a bit of guitar. Yeah, but he was mainly mainly the lyric guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, any ideas or any grooves or feels or whatever would would. Okay, Essentially, come from Angus and Malcolm. Okay. So um, after you left the bang, mm-hmm. band, what did you do after that? So you, you know you've ju- you you know got back into another band, like yeah, yeah. It was a ba- an Australian band called Finch, and we, we mm-hmm. did a couple of albums with that, and signed to an American record company. But um, was sort of it was a good band, and it was the the rec- the songs were really good. But um, we were signed to a, a, a record deal with uh, to the same or CBS, it should be CBS Australia, which was Dragon oh, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and Air Supply. And the guy who produced them was a guy called Peter Dawkins, who was fantastic at yeah. like that middle road and, and Dragon uh, and some of the Dragon records. Mm-hmm. I love oh, they, they're fan, they are I fantastic. Like Mark yeah. yeah, but yeah. that was a great band. Oh, but. Yeah. 
Paul Hewson. Yeah, oh, well, great, great, great guys. Yeah. And live they were sensational. Yeah. But they sounded very different live to how the records were. Mm-hmm. The records were really all the rough rock and roll edges were knocked off from that and it was always the records were almost middle of the road. Yeah. The same thing happened with, with Finch, you know, um, and we end up in called Contraband because there was another so you, Finch yeah, in America. Yeah, you are in many bands. Yeah. And so anyway, so we'd go out and we build up a really big live following, all the pub gigs all through Australia with, with Finch Contraband. And the only one's waiting for the first album to come out. Um, the first album did well, but the second album we had like a, a half a hit. We had like a top ten hit with it. It was like a country thing mm-hmm. called Where Were You? Um, but the album didn't sound like the band. So when all the people who really loved the band live bought the record, they'd say, What's this? What's this? Mm. <laughs> so all the people had come to the gig. So I got to see that band finish. They played that great song. Where were you? They be going, going. What's this? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually we actually fell fell between the rungs of the ladder. Yeah. Because we, we, okay. I, I, when we were making the record, I was at, you know loggerheads with when it was made. So listen, so we were a rock and roll band. And we were sounding like this is not how I imagined it'd be. Mm-hmm. And so oh no, we've got to make sure it gets played on radio. I said no, 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 do that. And uh, it was it was just the, you know compared to how the band was live the the albums were, were just uh, all washed out they were all sort of rinsed clean of mm-hmm. anything that was they were pasteurised mm-hmm. you know yeah. okay. and it was very disappointing okay yeah so when when so when you think of ACDC now what comes to mind just. Just great memories. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've only got good memories to band. You know, uh, I'm. I don't have any. I'm. I'm not predisposed to being bitter or angry about anything that really happens. You know. Oh no, that's not true. Mm. Uh, anything that I can have a control over. Anyway. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and, and it's you know, it's, it's just amazing. Like I, you know. I joined the band in 1975, and here we are now, almost 50 years old, like, and we're talking still talking about, about it. Yeah, I know we're still talking it, it, yeah, about it. Yeah, which, which is kind of incredible. If, if someone had said and that, people want to know. Yeah, if someone said know, yeah. Yeah, said that to me, then I was, oh, you got rocks in your head, you know. Mm. Get a doctor, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I've got the utmost respect for the guys and, and, and great memories, and um, yeah, it's like, you know, it's just you know, really quite sad that. Um, you know, Malcolm's not around. You know, mm. well, 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 that fact, but yeah. one of course too. Of but course. you know, yeah. but yeah. you know, it just it was just seemed to be awfully unfair. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm Jane Oakley, a Matilda alumni footballer, number thirty six, and you're listening to Radio Karen. Stay tuned. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Melbourne bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Oakley. Oh, okay, uh, sorry. Okay, so I have a, uh, some questions. Yeah. I have a gentleman who got in touch with me called Andre Sonnenberg. He messaged me from um, Germany. Mm-hmm. He runs a Facebook page called ACDC Tour and Concert History Research Group. Ooh. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's, that's on that, Facebook. That, that's very... Very German, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's very precise. I know. And German he, precision. He's got some Akadaka questions he would like me to ask you. All right. So I'll, I'll I think do you, my best. I think you better put your um, thinking cap on All right. for these ones. Right. Um, he's also told me that he, he's met you twice or he's come to your music store and then he later um, was at a fan meeting in Gizzle, Gizzle Wind. He met you oh, then as you, well. You, oh, my, that's not my <laughs> I'm sorry. Ga- uh, uh, Geiselvin. Ga- ah, is that how you pronounce Geiselvin. it? Oh, so well. Yeah. So anyway, so he's got four questions and I'm going to ask him. Do you want me to answer in German? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you remember the South Australian tour with Keystone Angels in October 1975? Were there only four concerts together, which were Wyala, Port Piri, Port Augusta and Port Lincoln, or more concerts? Now, did you get that? Mm-hmm. I can remember it. And it was Keystone's Angels, of course, turned out to be the Angels. 
Oh, the an- okay. The, the, what that, that's the band that turned into the Angels. Yes. They they played. Uh, uh, Doc was playing bass and the singer. And there was a guy called Charlie King playing drums. And there was two Brewster brothers. Yeah, I do remember the shows. There were those four shows. Uh huh. Um, and that's where the line of um, the Angels becoming the Angels. Getting signed to Elvis Productions started because mm-hmm. Malcolm said these guys were really good, mm-hmm. and then it just brewed up. And probably twelve months later, the Angels were signed to Elvis. They're playing at the Chelsea Heights up the road. Really? <laughs> yeah, they are. Still? Yes. How long have they been playing up there for? No, I, I don't I think, know them permanently. Oh, yeah, no, I know that they, they yeah. just um, have have a few pub rock bands that come here. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah, did but, see uh, the banner the other day dri- driving past. I thought, oh, the Angels are playing there. And but I, I think I think the lineup is very very different these days. Obviously, is it? Doc's not there. I, yeah. I, I think it's a it's a, like it's a band full of Brewsters. <laughs> is that so? Yeah. 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 I think I, I I don't know if they're all Brewsters, but I think I know there's at least four Brewsters in there. My goodness. All right, all right. So next question. Yeah. We've got a few to get through still. All right. Okay. Can you remember the yeah, can you remember the Radio Clyde tour in Scotland in May nineteen seventy six? Did A C D C perform only three shows in Armadale, Stirling, and East Kilbride or more? Radio Clyde. Radio Clyde tour in Scotland in May nineteen seventy six. Yep. I tell you what, I know what they're talking about. Um, my feeling is that those shows were booked to go forward, but they never went forward. Okay. The the first shows we did um, up there were for, um, for Sounds Magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Radio Clyde might have been involved in one of them, but we never we we never played in a place called Armadale. Okay. Because the reason being, I would have remembered that because Armadale was a suburb next to where he grew up. Oh, okay. Uh, but I think there there was a lot of shows that that didn't go forward because we we're supposed to be doing a tour with a band called the Backstreet Caller, and and they lost their guitar player. But no, there, there's. The reason there's not a lot known about those shows is because I don't think they ever happened. Mm. Sounds magazine is that anything to do with? Remember Sounds? Oh, uh, so that, yeah, yeah. Was, oh, oh, the, that was that the, Australian show. The cha- yeah. Was it Channel Seven? I always remember there Channel was Sounds. Seven. Yeah, was, on a yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah, it was, I love uh, that too. Yeah, yeah, it was Donny Summers. Yes, yeah. that was originally called Sounds. Sounds something else. I just, but anyway, um, yeah, Sounds magazine was. Uh, there was two really big music magazines mm-hmm. um, in England. One was called Melody Maker and the other one was the New Musical Express. Mm-hmm. And the Sounds magazine come out to be a bit more rock and roll. Okay. You know. Uh, but like NME and um, Melody Maker were really old school jazz magazines mm-hmm. yeah. that looked – they were uh, – when Sounds were bought out because they were, they were looked to be a little bit – Run out of wind and all mm-hmm. that. So, uh, Enemy was like the, like their version, the American version of the Variety magazine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so yeah, Sounds uh, took us on board and and they subsidised sponsors our first tour. That, that's a, that's the first time we were we were in um, Scotland. Was okay, there. all right. But I I, I do believe that the those dates were booked at some stage, but I don't think they went forward. Okay. All right, here's another one. Mm. Did ACDC record any shows in your time with the band? Mm. There are rumours that at least the Armadale 1976 show was recorded and broadcasted by Radio Clyde. Were any plans of a live album in your time with the band? No, Radio Clyde did record a gig and that was... Uh, it was in Glasgow, and I'm trying to remember the name of the hall. It's not uh, not an Usher Hall because that's Embra. It was. I can tell you where the gig was. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. But if you if you went out um, the Dumbarton Road straight out of the main Glasgow area, um, 
it's just out of the just out of the out of the city, mm-hmm. about, about two miles. Sucky Hall Street in, in the Dumbarton Road. Okay. There you go. And it was, and on the corner there was a pub called the Red Hoose. <laughs> okay. It's spelled H O O S E. Oh, the Red Hoose. I went in there and I was the tallest guy in the bar. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> okay, another one. Yep. Okay. Ever heard of the story that you couldn't play bass in Moi at Town Hall in 1975 and instead of, instead, a local bass player stepped in? Sandy Clark was his name. Can you remember this? No. No. Okay. But then again, if I wasn't there playing bass, I wouldn't remember it, yeah. would I? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't know. I, I've, never, I've never heard that one before. Okay. So that's a new one on me. Oh. I, don't, I don't. I always remember going out to gigs like Maui and Angus. Angus used to find strange things funny. You know, Did he? he? he, he he's, Odd. A, he's, he's No, he's, he's a very, very smart guy, right? But he'll find the most strange way. And he used to we used to be going um going out that way. And one road sign it'd send him into hysterics every time. Could be <laughs> your lawn and Moe. Oh, okay. said, oh Moe, your lawn. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be usually he's his a mind. joker like <laughs> you. He's a joker <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, it's just it isn't strange to find the things you remember. And always used to be and when we used to be driving back from there, we used to be fog everywhere. Oh. Yeah, you're yeah, in really Maui. dense fog. Yeah, yeah. All, all the um, all the um, is that the, electricity the, stations? The power there. plant. Yeah, yeah the power, power plant. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. yeah. So this mm-hmm. popped up. I heard about this last week. I don't know if you heard this. Um, did you ever know about ACDC's ex manager Crispin Die, who managed? ACDC for seven years. Yeah, I, I, yeah Chris, Chrisman was a friend of mine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because on the news last week they said that they've um, got new developments in, in his investigation, like the cold case, so reopening are you, are you, it. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, it was on the news. It was funny because I went to visit my father and he's normally on the grid. Yeah, yeah honestly. And, I, and yeah. he's normally Not on the grid. Not your father, but. No, 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 no. Like, I was watching, I popped in to see him. He was, he's normally on the Greek channels and um, yeah, he, put it on, he, put it on, <laughs> he put it on the Today Show and then I just saw it in a caption and I was like, leave it there, leave it there. And I had to, yeah, they've opened up new developments. To try and well, yeah, because he died at forty-one years old. Yeah, and, yeah on on Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. Um, Christmas and he just a, released an, an album. He's or, a country and western singer. Yeah, yeah Christmas was um, he was a um, really good friend of mine. I, I, I've got it. Went into music publishing um, for quite a number of years mm-hmm. from late seventies to the, the mid eighties, and he was my boss at, at Chapel Music. Okay. I got to know him really well. Yeah, he used to. Have, he, his stage name was Chris Die. Yes, um, and he was a really good singer. Um, yeah, that was. Uh, it was like ACDC's AC, personal manager. Mm-hmm. Great guy, really good songwriter. And unfortunately, it was um, he hung out with the wrong guys one night and he got assaulted. Yeah, so because he was, um, he wasn't. Uh, in those days, he, he, he wasn't openly gay, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, it was, that was his private life, so it didn't bother any of us. Yes. But, yeah, he, he was a great guy and it was just one of those things, the wrong spot at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I didn't know that they've really happened to case. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I've, I've never been taken aback in a radio interview like this before. Oh. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't even sure if I was going to ask that, but well, I thought, okay, well, what I, the I, hell? Okay, well, I, 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 I just, yeah, it's... I'm a bit punch drunk now. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh well, that's a good thing then. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah. Anyway, moving right along. Mm-hmm. Um, so, have you got a favourite musician or or a band? Like, I I know you said Rose Tattoo before, but have your have your tastes varied? Like, oh yeah, my my, my tastes are, are quite because you know varied. I'm always forever exploring new music mm-hmm. and genres and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, do you ever change or oh, I, listen I, to I, other stuff? Or? I, I, I I do. Um, I, I essentially I really don't have a favourite band or anything. I, I I grew up really loving the Rolling Stones and the mm-hmm. Who and the Small Faces. Yes, um, definitely. Bring that along. I, I, um, 
Well, more recently, I just went and saw the Black Crows when they were here mm-hmm. last time. Always the first Black Crows albums. I, I love those mm-hmm. because they re- re- remind me of um, Rod Stewart and the Faces. Yeah, I love yeah, the Faces. Yeah, and Rod Stewart. Uh, yeah, Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood. I end up being. Uh, um, I uh, love him in that era, yeah. Rod Stewart. Yeah, so do I. Mm. I. I've had a couple of late nights out with Ronnie Ronnie Wood over the years. Oh, yeah, interesting. You've yeah, got yeah, a few yeah, stories yeah, to tell. Yeah, yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> yeah, I went out with him. One night on a Sunday, and all of a sudden it was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, time flies. When yeah, you know those guys. Yeah, <laughs> mm. well, wicked. All right, mm. and yeah. So, how do you unwind between shows these days? A bit at home, relaxing. That's it. Family. That's right. Sport. 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 Yeah, no, I, yes. I don't. I don't. Oh, man, don't, I don't. No, I don't. I don't unwind watching Carlton play. <laughs> man, I got to tell you, like over the last ten years. Watching Carlton play, except for like, hopefully this season, watching it's been like slamming your dick in a car door. I'm telling you, <laughs> it, it's been all like, what, how, how can, like last year. How can you possibly be in the eight for all seasons at all season except for the last minute and twenty one mm-hmm. seconds very by up, one point? Very upsetting. Oh, hang on, I pull my headphones out. Oh, I can't. No. I, I was going to ask you That's what, how pissed what off I am. your hobbies and in- yeah, yeah, interests yeah. outside of music were, and I was, you know, was going to mention Carlton, but you've already mentioned it. <laughs> your love for sports. Yeah, and boxing. And boxing. Yeah, yeah. That's I, right. I saw, I saw, I saw, there is a boxing background with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I caught you. You, you, you know, my, you know, my, you know my, my background, my yeah. brother Johnny, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but and your nephews. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luke and well, Rowan. Boxing, big boxing background. I've been I've been back to training. I'm been training um, uh, oh, at least once a week now in, in, in boxing gyms for about the last six months. So I'm back to well, back keep to, you fit. Oh, it's, it's great training. It's yeah, and you get to punch thing. things. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's great because you're just punching bags and all that. The trick is with boxing, it's no fun. You, know, you can be really good at like that. But it's it's no good when you're doing it and then someone's trying to punch you. Mm. That's, yeah, you can, I, can do, I can do without that. Concentration, isn't it? it Con- yeah, con- concentration. you've got to be keep everything. those hands up, and you've got to be like like that. Yeah, it's just, just yeah. And that's how you lose weight. You sweat by the oh, bu- buckets. Yeah. Just, absolute absolutely. There, there's a boxing place here in Chelsea. It's called Beast, and it's five dollars a. Yeah, I might get back there. Yeah. <laughs> Five dollars or what? <laughs> Just to to rock up once, like five dollars every time you go there. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, well, that's not you bad. You go for there a gym. as long as you want. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, I know how you love your sports, mm-hmm. but soccer. So yeah, soccer. Tell um, me. Yeah, I, I love yeah. Well, yeah, football. So you look yeah. at the t-shirt you've got on. Oh yeah, here you go. Here, bibs. I got a Hibernian t-shirt on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I do it. I, I, I just, I, I think you know. Sport in general, I, 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 now I think about it, I, I, I do wind down watching sport. Mm-hmm. I used to play tennis a hell of a lot and used to play a lot of golf. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, sport to me, I, I, I've always been taken by what sport. What other clubs do you like? Football clubs? Yes, football. Okay, all right. I see Sydney Swans, I'm pretty keen. I'm oh, we're going I'm football. A, I was oh, talking oh, about the UK. But oh, okay. oh, UK, okay. Or European. Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea, the, the Blues, because I used to yep. live, live – I used to go Chelsea. in between the Blues and Fulham because I used okay. to live right in between Stamford Bridge and Craven Cottage, which is the home ground of the two. Uh, but now because of Ange Postacoglu, I think I have to move over to Hotspur. <laughs> uh, 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 um, and your Hibs, wife? What were you talking about, your wife? She's a, she's, she's yeah, a Hibs yeah. person because her, her, mum's, uh, her mum was born in Linlithgow. Uh, it's just outside Edinburgh. Uh, so that's where the hip thing comes from, uh-huh. and her father is a Syrian. Which, um, if you look back to in the Bible, yeah, there's that thing. I'm not really. I don't. I'm, but the the first book of the the Testament is, is Genesis, and it says that let, let there be light. Let there be that that sound yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Right? And the Assyrians are mentioned on the first page of the Bible. Okay. They're, they're, they're you know, probably the first civilization. Her, her dad's Assyrian, okay. which basically boils down to. Um, uh, Iraqi Christian. Okay. So, you know, she's a bit of a blend. So um, uh, that's how I got into the Hibs through that. Okay. Uh, and then I've got a Berlin, Union Berlin. Mm-hmm. They're, they're another team that I've signed on to. Um, 
And your daughter plays? Yeah, she plays play? at Balmain. Yeah, she's she's also involved. Um, what did you tell me about Balmain? The yeah, they're the, they're the biggest uh, soccer club in New South Wales. Mm. Um, but, yeah, but she's, she's in the fitness and loves sport. But she works uh, for a foundation called NASCA, mm-hmm. which is involved in sport. It stands for, I hope I get this right, the National Aboriginal Sporting Chance Academy. Mm-hmm. And it, it identifies um, talented Indigenous people and it helps them with their education and, and their, their needs with, in, in the sporting range. She spends a lot of time in, in Northern Territory mm-hmm. with – should show some photos. It's fantastic. Mm. And she's heavily involved in, in the uh, – that, that cause, it's great. So she's a soccer player. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. And I, good things come out of sport. They do, they do. Um, so I have to ask um, a question about Rose Tattoo. Well, about Angry actually. Yeah. Um, so when you're playing gigs, mm-hmm. I know that, you know, he, he wrote the song suddenly for his – it was a solo track, mm-hmm. you know, for – on Neighbours during Scott and Charlene's wedding. Yeah. I wasn't even aware of that too uh, recently. I know. So does he ever get asked to play that when you're out? No, never. <laughs> I know. I mean, I just wanted to ask. It's like, too tough to ask. Do you reckon? Yeah. No. Because he's, tough. yeah. Can't ask. I didn't even know about didn't that. Didn't you? No. No. Okay. He's ballad. He's <laughs> he's. Ballad. What about no, it, was, it, was from, it was from a TV show or yeah, something. Yeah, it was. It played Neighbours. on Neighbours. It was Neighbours, during there you go. Um, Scott and Charlene's wedding. But Scott, I know nothing about that. Oh, I, you probably went in the country. Yeah, I, who I, knows I don't where think you were. Was. But what about? I, I was probably in witness protection. What, yeah. about, what about when he came out in the Batmobile? <laughs> oh, I was going to. I thought I, I wasn't going to ask that question. I don't. I, this is something else I don't know the about bat, either. The Batmobile. Who's in the Batmobile? And it's on YouTube yeah, it's, too. Uh, the grand final was at Waverley that year. Angie. Uh, it must be the one that the, 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 the Eagles won. Or Hawthorne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the Eagles. Uh, Hawthorne beat the Eagles. I think. Oh, good. But Angry came out in the Batmobile. Yes. And sang a song, Bound for Glory. Yes, it was Bound yeah. for Glory. And I, I honestly thought, oh, I'm not going to go there. To I'm not going to ask about that question. <laughs> no, you can I, Google that one. I, 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 once again, I, I, I plead ignorance of that one. Oh. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you'll, you'll, no, I'm finding out things you'll, yeah, okay. you'll have a laugh. Okay, so tell me about these um, Monsters of Rock cruises. Do you go on oh, those? Because yes. <laughs> my friend Candy was telling me how she books, books, um, I don't know all the flights for Rose Tattoo here and there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we yeah. Do, and she we goes, do oh, I know them. They go on these Monster of Rock yeah, cruises. Oh, yeah, they're called an eight-day hangover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And that they're, yeah, they're so, feral. Did we, I, I, I didn't – the band had just done one recently I, I, um, back in June, but uh-huh. I, I, I couldn't do it because I would, I'd had things uh, – Commitments I had to take care of in Europe. Okay. So they got another bass player to do it. But I did the one fight prior to it. And um, yeah, you get all these American hard rock and heavy metal bands. Okay. And Americans, if they're in a band, right, they live it 24 hours a day. And so you'd be up on the main deck where you on in, this is in the Caribbean, right? You're on a cruise boat in the Caribbean. And there's these deck chairs, so you're just drinking beer and you're getting a catch in a tan. And all these guys are coming up with their, like, their big hair uh-huh. and, and black leather pants and all that. They, they, they won't give up, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah it's like, Take yeah. a break. Yeah. It's like a, band, a ship full of motley, motley crew people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well. Yes, I do those. But, and and that, they are a lot of fun. But you, you, you only do two one-hour sets over eight days and you're on a boat. Which means you can't get off the thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, 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 you know, you get a private bar or something to have a drink. Oh, well, you, you do. You do get it before you go. You go have a private bar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Because otherwise, it's It'd just be like you, with you, you have to like if you have to go from one end of the boat to the other with especially when you're angry, you have to, you have to lock in travel time. It takes about two hours to get the length of the boat. Yeah. You know? And you'd be signing an autograph. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, it's like that. All right. Yeah. So, where can fans find you now, Mark? Well, what's next? Well, you're what's next? next? You're well, off I, to Canberra. Oh, oh you mean gig wise? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Or where can oh, they find oh, you? Oh, ne- next weekend. Um, 
Would you go to the Rose Tattoo, to, Rose, Rose Tattoo site, rosetattoo.com.au? Yep. I know you're off to the, Canberra, yeah, then yeah. you're New South Wales in WA. I've got to hear. Yeah, oh, you, you know more than <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I, because actually it's happened twice this tour. Uh, Sharon, my wife, who, you, who you've met, <laughs> yes. uh, drops me off at the airport. I go in and I've gone in, in uh, to Virgin and I go, yeah, go get in there, don't learn, get it and say, okay, um, Mark Evans, where are you going? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh. I don't, 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 what flight do you on? I, I think it's 11 o'clock. Oh, yes, no, it's just roast tattoo down. Okay, we've got you. So I don't know where I'm – oh, actually, it's twice. I don't know I don't know where I was going. Uh, one, one of them was to Cairns and one of them was to um, Adelaide, I think. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's right. And if they can find you on the Mark Facebook Fan page, Mark yeah, Evans yeah, the Mark fan. Evans, Mark Evans fan group. Yeah, and there's also I've got um, a personal page which is Mark Evans. Yeah, um, and then there's another one I had to start off because um, once they get the five thousand people, you, that's the most you can have on those. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've started off on another a, a new page which is uh, Mark Evans TFFT. Okay, we can join up to that because all the same stuff goes on oh, okay. both pages. Okay, but, great. But now I had to, I had to, they closed me down when I got 5,000 friends. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. happens all the time. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not close to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, you have had quite the career and you're still mm-hmm. living your best life. I want to thank you for coming into the studio here My at Radio pleasure. Cara. You know, you're sharing all your amazing stories mm-hmm. with us. and been a pleasure. Really stretching my musical knowledge. You know, it's been, <laughs> you know, it's been a real treat. I don't treat. quite know how to take that. <laughs> so thank you so much for yeah, coming. Thanks, it's, it's probably been my longest interview I've had. It is. Really. really? Yeah. Well, we, we, well, we have been going for a while, haven't we? We have. I yeah. think it's been, yeah. Nearly two hours. Nearly two hours. Wow. So, how much are you getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> you got the beer in the Oh, yeah, I'll get the beer and pizza already. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, in, I'm enjoying a Melbourne bitter right now. Let's see. So, yeah, so all the best mm-hmm. with everything. And um, you've been wonderful. So thank you again. My pleasure. Hi, this is Matt Joe Gow, and you're listening to Radio Karam, which is local community internet radio. And uh, we were having a chat about community radio earlier and how important it is to Melbourne, how important it is to the scene here, the music scene, but also the wider community. So check out Radio Karam, tune in. Oi, 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 oi. IGA is shopping nights. IGA, where the price is right. Seaford North IGA for your groceries and liquor. IGA Express, there's nothing quicker.